Hello, this is Caleb Barney with Russell Real Estate, and today I wanted to go over a, uh, an article from Keeping Current Matters titled, Why Mortgage Rates Could Continue to Decline. And uh, as I'm recording this, it's actually Wednesday, December 20th, 2023. This article just came out, and how they start it is by saying that, you know, when you read about the housing market or when you hear about it, you'll probably come across some information about inflation or recent decisions made by the Federal Reserve. But how do those two things impact you and your home buying plans? So here's what you need to know. The Federal Reserve, uh, they are in control of the federal funds rate. And as of right now, the federal funds rate hikes have stalled. Uh, so one of the Federal Reserve's primary goals is to lower inflation. They want inflation, the inflation rate to be about 2% per year. So they want some growth, um, you know, some increasing prices, but nothing crazy. And unfortunately, last year, uh, we saw our CPI, uh, which is Consumer Price Index. Uh, it's a, a measure of inflation. Hits uh, almost double digits. We are at the nine and change uh you know, percentile, or I'm sorry, percentage. So, um, you know, if they want to get to 2% and we're at almost 10%, that's not good. Uh, so in order to do that, what they ended up doing was they raised the federal funds rate to slow down the economy. Uh, what the federal funds rate is, it's basically an interbank uh, exchange rate or, you know, what they are paying as far as their interest rates are concerned. And um, it was sitting at 0% for a long time. Uh, and between that and between the stimulus checks that were uh, being given out and whatnot, there was a lot of cash that was being infused into the economy. Uh, borrowing was cheap for businesses, and they were basically incentivized to do so. Meanwhile, uh, unemployment numbers were actually very, very low. And in order to keep their best employees, a lot, of, uh, a lot of businesses had to offer pay increases. Or because, their, because unemployment was so low and the unemployment pool was so low and didn't have very many people, um, you would see a lot of poaching and people, or businesses I should say, were offering bonuses, you know, signing bonuses, they were offering better packages to entice people to leave, you know, well-qualified people to leave their, you know, pretty well-paying job for either a high, higher paying job or one with more benefits. Um, and that's actually the other goal for the, uh, for the Fed, by the way. So the one is to keep inflation in check. Uh, again, that's supposed to be about 2%. And then the other goal that they have is to keep unemployment as low as healthily possible. Um, because again, you don't actually want unemployment to be too low. Otherwise, uh, if you do have a lot of businesses that are offering raises or bonuses or promotions or whatever, um, that will often lead to more spending from the consumer, which will lead to more inflation. So um, even though the federal funds rate does not directly dictate what happens with mortgage rates, it does have an impact. Um, and essentially when they were increasing the federal funds rate, uh, drastically, it's discouraged banks from lending. Um, and it also put a damper on the bond market, which is what drastically increased interest rates as well at the same time. So starting in March, 2022, the writing was on the wall that interest rates were going up, um, at a much, much faster pace than they were anticipating. So they did a 25 basis point rate hike. Um, basis point is basically like when you see 25 basis points, it just means that they increase it a quarter of a, a quarter of a percent. Um, in May, which was the next time they met, they raised it 50 basis points or half of a percent. And then for the next four meetings, they raised it 75 basis points each time. So we went from a very, very low interest rate environment to increasing it pretty drastically uh, just in 2022 alone. They continued to increase the federal funds uh, or the yeah funds rate basically 
throughout 2023, uh, or at least the first half of it, essentially. And finally, um, you know, once we hit June, they didn't. July, they raised another quarter of a point. And then the last three times the Fed has met, they decided to hold off on it. And not only have they decided not to raise the federal funds rate the last three times that they met, but they actually signaled that there might be rate cuts coming in 2024. And according to the New York Times, it says that Federal Reserve officials left interest rates unchanged in their final policy decision of 2023 and forecast that they will be cutting or that they will cut borrowing costs three times in the coming year, a sign that the central bank is shifting toward the next phase and its fight against rapid inflation. So that's all good news for anybody in the real estate industry. Um, because again, even though it does not directly correlate with, uh, interest rates and what the 30 year fixed rate mortgage is going to do, um, when the fed, uh, talks the bond market and everybody in the, uh, surrounding markets, you know, stock marks, everything like that, they listen. So basically this, uh, this indicates that the fed thinks the economy and inflation are improving. So this it just depends on what you view as improving um honestly the economy is slightly weakening although it's still strong but the economy was improving it was too strong before um and that's why we were seeing the interest rates or i'm sorry the inflation jump up so drastically so the economy is actually in a good spot right now but it's not improving in the sense that it's getting stronger, it's improving in the fact that it's moving closer to where the Fed wants it to, and that's closer to that 2% inflation mark. Same thing right here for inflation. So why does that matter to you and your plans to buy a home? It could end up leading to lower mortgage rates and improved affordability. Um, it's no secret to anybody who's looking to buy a house or who has been looking to buy a house over the past year and a half that uh, affordability has been hit pretty hard because home prices uh, didn't really come down even with interest rates more than doubling last year. And what, uh, what affects affordability, there's really only three factors. It's going to be the home price, it's going to be your mortgage rate, and it's going to be your income. Uh, income has gone up a little bit, nothing too crazy um, to offset the costs there. So as a percentage of your income, the housing payments have gone up quite a bit over the past 18 months because mortgage rates have more than doubled, house prices have stayed firm or slightly gone up, uh, depending on the area that you're in, and your income has only slightly gone up as well. So uh, mortgage rates are coming down. That's the next section that they have here. And it says mortgage rates are influenced by a variety of factors and inflation and the Fed's actions, or as has been the case recently, inaction, play a big role. Now that the Fed has paused the increases, it looks more likely that mortgage rates will continue their downward trend. So you could see here, this is just charting all of 2023, which honestly, 2023, yes, it was sort of a roller coaster ride, um, but it wasn't terrible. This is from uh, this is from Freddie Mac. The rates that you see here. I actually like using Mortgage News Daily because they take into account not just the face value of the interest rates, but what the rate ends up being after people buy down points, and it gives you a, a truer percentage of what people are actually paying then. Um, because this is just saying, hey, this is what the average thirty-year fixed rate mortgage is going to be interest rate is going to be but most people will actually buy down some points to lower that interest rate a little more so just looking to see where we're at today um, according to mortgage news daily the average 30-year fixed rate mortgage is at about 6.64 percent and actually that was updated yesterday uh, they do update it every day but uh, apparently they haven't as of yet, which is 12, uh, 1230 basically right now. So 6.64%, you could see here's the interest rate chart 
from you know 2021 you know, we could see, wow, look at all of these. By the time people are paying down points, we're seeing in the, you know, two eights, basically. Um, and then it drastically spikes. Here's January of 2022. You know, you're starting at 3.41. By the time you get to March, you're already at four and three quarters. And it continued to spike. It peaked that year. Uh, a little over seven. Uh, some some statistics that I see say seven point three seven in the last week of October, and then this year, same thing. Basically, right around the same time, going heading into the last week of October, seven point nine one. I remember it actually did hit eight percent for a couple of days there as well. So right now, back down to our six points. 6.5, that was on Monday the 18th. Um, so yeah, I mean, we're, we're looking good right here. So that being said, bottom line, the Fed's decisions have an indirect impact on mortgage rates. By not raising the federal funds rate, uh, mortgage rates are, continu- are, are likely to continue declining, especially, and this is not only by not raising it, but by saying that they're planning on doing three uh, rate decreases uh, or three rate cuts in 2024. That is good news for anybody in the real estate industry, but also anybody looking to buy or sell a house. Um, So most people think, hey, lower interest rates, that helps buyers, which yes, it does because of affordability, but it also helps sellers because then you have more buyers who are looking uh, or able to afford your house then. So that's uh, that's everything for today. Again, um, this is Caleb Barney with Russell Real Estate, and have a great day.